Hi, welcome back to the Mermaid YouTube channel. Today we're gonna turn this into a lamp. So you may find yourself asking the question, Justin, how are you gonna turn this into a lamp? And to be honest, I'm not sure. I have about 40% of a plan. So we're gonna see how it goes. The main part of my plan is to repurpose this lamp, which has been sitting in our basement for at least a year, unused. Pretty sure it still works. And take this apart, take the guts out, and use it to do something. So I got the lamp taken apart. This is the cord from it. And the socket part would sit down in here. But this is broken. So this would normally be in here and then these would screw together and you'd have this down in there and have this turn it up. So these are broken, we're not gonna use those. Uh, I will most likely end up 3D printing a new base for this to sit down into. And then this I don't think is gonna stick out far enough with where it's gonna be positioned on the lamp. So we'll have to figure that out. I have an idea for that but that's gonna be later. I'll get to that when we get to it. So for now, I'm gonna set the cord aside and get to work on making the whole structure stronger. And for that, I've already taken the whole thing apart, so this is just a section of it. And the problem I'm worried about, of course these are more snug, but some of them were loose. Like if I picked up the whole structure, it would be kind of floppy and in danger of just falling apart. So to fix that, what I've done is taken, drilled holes in either end of the popsicle sticks, craft sticks, and now that ain't going nowhere. And I think that'll be just a nice little shiny element on the outside of the lampshade. So the structure of this now is pretty solid with all the screws reinforcing all the joints. So nothing's gonna slip out of place. Now that I've got that done, I've made this paper template because each of the side panels, I want to have a fabric essentially like that, just a panel in there to diffuse the light. So I've made this paper template. Took some trial and error, but I got it right. And then it's got the holes along the outside and I'm gonna use the holes that are in these connector pieces. And I'm essentially going to stitch from there to there. Now it, I'm gonna do some experimenting to see what the best way to install eyelets in the fabric is gonna be so they don't just tear out. I've turned my paper template into a cardboard template for better repeatability. And then I use that to cut out fabric. And my first test was I just took and I did, I brushed two part epoxy along the edge to stop fraying and to reinforce it for grommets. See grommets? Um, and while that works, these grommets won't really pull out of the fabric now. I don't like the look of it. The two-part epoxy is like, it's kind of, that's the issue I thought I was gonna have is it just looks bad. So we're gonna scrap that one. And then second attempt, second test, cut on another one, cut it a little bigger and then I fold it over the back edges and just used some PVA glue that I use for a book binding 
because it'll dry pretty clear to just double up that fabric to make it strong enough for the grommets and I think that's what we're gonna go with. I was thinking about also sewing along these edges to reinforce them. I, I don't think it's necessary though and if it turns out it is I can always come back and do that later if it looks like things are starting to not hold up as well. So now I just need to duplicate this 10 times, nine times, I've got one, so I need to duplicate it 10 times, nine times. Figure it out, dummy. And then each of these is going to cover a side panel with the top and the bottom being open. So let's go do that. So the lampshade is done, but a lampshade on its own isn't very cool. It's just a lampshade and it just kind of sits there. So now what we need is a post to hold up the lampshade. That's gonna be a floor lamp, so we need something to hold it up. I started in Fusion 360 and I drew up kind of an idea of what I wanted and I'll put that here. Oh, okay, well, here. Here, it'll, it'll be on the screen, you can see it. Um, and that idea, it looked okay, but I wasn't really sure I wanted, that was gonna use a lot of material for each pentagon for the base. So instead I cut out all these that are the same size. Well, I didn't do it, I had my intern do it. And by intern, I mean CNC. But you could easily do this with a jigsaw or multiple other saws. Or if you have a CNC, you can have it do it while you're working on other things like that lampshade. So that's what I did. But so I've got a bunch of these. Of course, these on their own are pretty boring. They're just plywood. Um, I'm, I'm a fan of the plywood edges, so I'm not worried about that part of it. But still, I think this isn't really gonna match the lamp aesthetic very well. So we're gonna spice it up a bit. We'll do that in a minute. And I also had my other intern, AKA 3D printer, printing these spacers that will be used on the lamp base. So let's fancy up the pentagons, and then I'll show you how the whole thing goes together. Okay, we have all the pieces that we need now to make the lamp. We've got galvanized, galvanized steel pipe for the actual post, all the spacers and little shelf pieces, Lamp cord, salvaged from an old lamp. Lamp shade, light bulb. New housing for the switch mechanism. And a plate to attach this to the shade. And the base is just another pentagon with a flange for the pipe to sit down into and then I just put feet on the bottom as well as a spacer block in the middle so that I could secure the flange with nuts and bolts. So I'm gonna scoot all this out of the way and then we're gonna start building up the post of the lamp. This is the first spacer. The only difference between this and most of the other ones is that the interior hole is big enough that it fits over this part of the flange. And that was actually completely on accident. This is the first one I printed with the hole too large. I was planning on buying a larger PVC pipe, but I couldn't find one that was the diameter I needed. So I went with this anyway, just to give it a little more heft. Uh, so this was an accident, but it actually works out well that it fits over this and I can continue on from there. Also, some of these shelves I have to put on 
the right side up because of a CNC goof where I moved the bit when it was still farther down the material. So that'll just be our little secret. Also, I should have made the holes on these just a tiny bit larger. They're pretty snug. So some of them get caught in places, but oh well. And this is the final spacer. It's slightly smaller than the rest. And it's also got extra geometry in there. I don't know if you can see that or not, but that's so that when it comes up here, like so, this top flange can still get onto the pipe. And cap that off. So let me bring you in so we can so I can show you how we're gonna attach the top part. Okay, and I don't really have a way to clamp this in place, so I'm just gonna kinda hope for the best. I'm gonna start with drilling a pirate pirate, a pilot hole, and then use these stainless steel screws to attach. lamp. Turn that back off because it looks better on video this way. In person with the light on, looks great. I don't think I ever said why I was doing this. It's for the Because We Make podcast. They're doing a lighting fixture challenge, the Enlighten Us challenge. I'll put a link in the description to all the details about that. By the time this video comes out though, you're going to be short on time. If you haven't started a project yet, you may not be able to get one done. So if you want to do it, Hurry up. Otherwise, just check out the hashtag, hashtag BWM Enlighten Us on Instagram and see all the other cool projects that other people have done. But as for mine, it never would have happened without the Mystery Maker collab, which if you watched my last video was the shipwreck box. I got stuff from Jacob, made a box, sent it back to him. I sent these colored craft sticks and this llama fabric to Morley. Morley Kurt. He does a lot of cool stuff here on YouTube and Instagram and elsewhere as well. I'll put a link to all his stuff down in the description. But he sent me back these connectors. He didn't say what they were for. He just sent me a box with the craft sticks, the llama fabric, and the connectors in there. And told me to put it together and see what I get. So I put it together, got the dodecahedron shape, and the first thing that came to mind was like, that would make an awesome light. And luckily, this challenge was going on, which gave me a great excuse to do it. So light fixture. I didn't really plan right away to use the llama fabric, but once I was thinking about it, I was like, well, I've got to use the llama fabric somehow, and I didn't have enough to cover the whole thing. So that's why I asked the wife for assistance, because she knows better what goes together. So we decided on the llamas. I wanted to use the sloths because they're adorable, and then this kind of floral pin print, bright colored fabric, just for color. So. I think they work really well together, especially with all the colored craft sticks, the colorful shelves, the bright orange 3D printed dodecahedron spacers. 
I really like it. I'm a fan of it. I know, I know not everyone's going to be a fan of this aesthetic, but I don't care because it doesn't have to live in their house or their bedroom. It's in mine and they can deal with it. The shelves I've got kind of set up in like a spirally pattern right now, but you can easily move them. They're all adjustable, spin them around. So if you need more space, like if you want to put something really tall on here, you can rotate the shelves around out of the way and put something taller on there. Right now I've just got a picture, it's a shorter picture of my grandma. So it's pretty good. And then just whatever other knickknacks and kind of things you want to put on there. Got plenty of room to do it. So it's a nice kind of shelf lamp combination. I think I'm rambling now and I think I've covered pretty much everything I need to cover. So if you have any questions, let me know in the comments down below. And yeah, now I'm done. So subscribe for future videos, like this video. I'll put other videos somewhere on the screen that you might like to watch. Otherwise, stay safe, stay healthy. And yeah, I think I'm just gonna stand here for the next hour or so and do this. Excuse me, fish. <laughs>